I love learning about science and how the world works. My name is Donato, and I'm in year 11 at school. I work hard at my studies, and I am a consistent honor student. When I graduate, I dream of becoming a marine engineer. Wala, aras babaw. Coming from a big family, my parents struggled to pay my school fees. So thankfully, I was a beneficiary of the Child Sponsorship Program at the Corps. We were very grateful for the sponsorship. However, our family was facing an uncertain future as the support would end when I graduated from school. Two years ago, my family was very happy when we were invited to transition into the SICA project. The new project supports families to build sustainable livelihoods and plan a better future. When we joined the program, we were given five chickens. We also completed a training session on how to take care for them and build a business. Now. We have over 50 chickens and make a good profit selling the chickens and the eggs. Every morning, I come with my family to feed the chickens before school. I collect rice hulls on a tricycle for the bedding to keep the birds clean and dry. The whole family loves caring for them. They are great animals to keep. Our organic chickens and eggs are in high demand and my parents are happy to have a reliable food source and income. We are very thankful for the Sika program and our work will benefit us all into the future. The funds support me and my siblings through school, and my parents are now able to build a more permanent house. The core has always been a big part of my life, and I like to serve in the worship band. My grandmother was one of the founding members over three decades ago. Now, four generations of my family attend and bring our tithes and self-denial offerings to the core. I am very thankful for the Salvation Army and excited for my future. The SICA program in the Philippines helped families transition from child sponsorship to a community sustainable program. Through this, we were able to help the families to upgrade the level of life. And we are now coming to you to appeal to help the self-denial in order to help these families and individual children, not only here in the Philippines, but in, in the entire world. And thank you. Please give generously. And welcome to our guests that will be watching our meeting on YouTube. Boy, have we got a meeting this morning for you, so you'll enjoy it this afternoon, believe me. And I'd like to welcome, first up, the Just Brass members of our band this morning. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, 
The singers that sang there this morning, I could listen to them every day of the week. They do a wonderful job and they are great singers. So thank you for that. Much appreciated. And thank you to the parents of the Just Brass Kids for giving them the opportunity of coming along and being part of this wonderful band. It's a great thing that they can do. So thank you for your, uh, your kindness in, in that as well. Now, I speak every Sunday on the basis of um, the power of prayer. And we've got a few people this uh, Sunday that we need to pray for. And uh, Pat Sheldon. Now, Pat comes with Johnny Stewart every day, every uh, Sunday. So she's um, broken a few ribs. So she's not feeling too comfortable at the moment. So we would like to pray for, uh, for Pat and uh, whatever. And, of course, Pam Rob Major Pam Robinson, her son, Ron, has had a heart attack. Brother, sorry, brother. No, you, you haven't got a son, have you? Two. Oh, well. <laughs> Your brother. I've even got it written down here, so don't worry about it, all right? Yeah. Um, so your brother, Ron, has had a heart attack, so we, we pray for him, and we pray for him to come back in, in great health. And, of course, we, uh, we mentioned from time to time, but we need to pray desperately here for Heather Lang. Heather Lang's back in hospital again, and she's not, uh, not doing too well, so we need to pray for her very, very heartily and, um, and for her to get uh, health back. And, of course, it's, it's a great strain on Ivan, and we pray for him as well that... Uh, that Ivan can, uh, can cope with all those sadness that he's uh, going through at the moment. And then I learnt this morning that uh, Myra's sister, Ada, is uh, not too well as well. So we pray for her as well, Myra. So we, uh, we ask for that uh, from our Lord. Now, we do have a list in our, our newsletter of birthdays, but I like to mention the birthday that's on the day. And we have Paul, who sits up the back there, Paul, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Paul. And the most exciting part is when we have visitors. And I know there's a couple that have snuck in, but I can't differentiate between new visitors and just brass parents. So forgive me if you've arrived here, and I'm not going to mention your name, but if welcome anyway. But we do have Major Thelma Ezzi back with us this morning. So, Major, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And Walter. Walter. Now, Walter didn't tell me his name. That's a miss. Welcome to Walter. And, of course, from Newcastle, we have Major Sam and Margaret Price. I feel a little bit out of it. We're sort of like getting majors everywhere this morning. So, yeah, I mean to get a purple or maroon top, I think. Yeah. Welcome to you as well. Now, on Monday the 19th, we've been notified that Frank Hamer, now Frank Hamer goes to our Pine Rivers Salvation Army Church. Frank has passed away. So they're having a service for him on Monday the 19th at two o'clock in the Salvation Army Church at, uh, at Pine Rivers. And the Pine Rivers Church has asked for a band to be played on that day. So if you're able, could you please... I, uh, Ozzy, can they talk to you? Yeah, OK. Well, if you can go on that day to play in their band, then, uh, then talk to Ozzy about that. Now, we have youth group this Friday at 5.30. Now, I noticed by the, the um, meeting plan that you've got a clip somewhere. Is that after me? Ah, OK, all right. Ah, right, OK, all right. So we've got youth group this Friday at 5.30 here in the hall. So uh, if you're wanting to attend that, please uh, please turn up at uh, 5.30. The Big O, the Big O's on again. That's on the 28th of um, February. And the RSVP needs to be in by the 25th. So um, for catering purposes and whatever, uh, if you can have your RSVP into Chris or David by the, the 25th, that would be great. And of course, we mentioned earlier today about the power of prayer. We have the World Day of Prayer. Now, that's at the Lutheran Church on the 1st of March at 9.30. So it's in the newsletter. So if you're wishing to attend there, 
please uh, look it up in the newsletter and it'll tell you where you, uh, what time and what have you. Now, one of the most successful programs we have in the church is out on the board, out in the corridor there, we have rosters for various job functions. And we have one there for flowers, I know that for sure. We have one now there for people that are wishing to, to read the scripture reading during our meeting. Sometimes people say, oh, I'd like to have a go at that. Well, you, you put your name down there and we'll give you the go at that. And also, the offering prayer. People say, oh, I'd like to get up and just, you know, say a prayer to the Lord about the offerings we make and what have you. So you can put your name down for that as well. All right. Well, that's enough. We have morning tea this, uh, this morning. So, uh, <laughs> okay, no, 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 that. We have morning tea this morning, so uh, certainly feel free to come out and have a couple with us all and, uh, and have a chat. Thank you. God bless. Beneath every doubt, there's redemption. Beyond what we see, he's at work. Before we believe, he hurts when we're hurt. have a great group of young people in our church and we should be praying for them regularly. Um, that was from two weeks ago, wasn't it? And um, they did some other activities. And so those who are of that age bracket, even those who aren't of that age bracket and who would like to help, um, please talk to Matt and um, he can give you a bit of information. Um, I'm a bit jealous of John, he has his own theme song. Um, <laughs> I didn't even get any drum roll or anything, mate. <laughs> What's going on here? So this morning, <laughs> this morning we come to worship and Rhonda's going to come and she's going to bring a um, scripture reading in a minute. But I just want to share with you this story and it's called Feathers in the Wind. And you'll very quickly pick up the theme of our meeting this morning as the meeting goes through. But let me share this story with you. In a small German village, a woman differed with her minister, her pastor, and became so angry that she began spreading ugly rumours about him all around town. As fate would have it, she eventually became ill and called on the minister to pray for her. And he gladly came and she asked his forgiveness for her gossiping. I will, grant you your, I will grant you forgiveness, the minister said. But there's something you must do. I'll do anything, the woman said. Okay, he said. As soon as you get well, go and pluck the feathers from a black chicken and put them in a basket and bring them to me. But when the woman got well, she did what the minister asked and presented the basket of feathers at his house. You did well, he said. Now take this basket of feathers and scatter them in the corners of the marketplace 
and from the towers of the church, scatter them throughout the town, and then come back to me. And so the woman did. She walked from one end to the other, scattering the feathers. Then she returned to him. I have done as you have asked, she said. Very well. Very well. Now take your basket and go and collect all the feathers. Make sure, make sure you do not miss one feather. But that is impossible, the woman said with a choking cry. The wind has carried many of them far away. Well, my dear, so it is with your words, the minister said. While I have gladly forgiven you, do not forget that you can never undo the damage your untrue words have done. For as we see, once the feathers of gossip are scattered into the wind, it's impossible to retrieve all of them. The damage would have been done and the scar remained. You know, you're getting older when the stairs are a challenge and there's only three of them. This morning we have a few scripture readings throughout our meeting lead. The meeting lead's a little different this morning. And um, the first reading I'd like to share with you is from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 6. Isaiah 50, and it's on the screen for those who haven't got their Bibles with them or would just like to look up. Maybe you'd like to close your eyes and listen. The Sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears and I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. I pray this morning that as we progress through our meeting that the Lord opens up each reading for us and gives us new understanding of them. Before Dean and Melissa come and share the kids' time for us, we're going to have a song. And it's song 940 in our songbook. And this is a song I love. We're an army. We're an army fighting for a glorious king. We will make the world with hallelujahs ring. With victorious voices we will ever sing their salvation for the world. I think for this one, and as we haven't done it yet already, and as I remember, we might stand, if you're able, to sing this song. Thank you. 
upstairs, Melissa. Come upstairs. Does it work this time? Hello? Is it working? Yes. Hello, Melissa. Hello, dear. Hello, Captain Dean. Yeah, I'm not a major. I sort of feel like you should do this, though. Captain Dean! Da, 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 yeah, da. like that. That's a good theme song. Yeah. Can you sing that next time I get up, John? No worries. Da, da, da. But John has the choreography, too. Anyway, now focus. Focus, focus. Okay, I need you to help me. Can you find three helpers for us, please? It doesn't matter if do, they... Do you want me have, to go downstairs again? naturally coloured hair, white hair, no hair, it doesn't matter. Who would like okay. to help us? Oh, come on. Mia, come on. Mia wants to help. I saw a hand go up. Who else wants to help? Who's brave like Mia? Come on. Is that Noah? Come on, Noah. It's all right. It won't hurt. It won't hurt. I come promise. on. Oh, do you want them upstairs? And Joseph. Joseph's a great volunteer. Oh, look, I've got even more. Are you coming too, Xavier? <laughs> Up you come, guys. You have to walk up the stairs now that you've come down. Look at that, now I've got lots of them. Do you only want three? three. Just three, okay. Uh, it's only because I've only got three. Are you desperate to help? You're desperate to help. Really? Can you go collect all the pencil cups for me? Thanks. Okay, one, two, three, because you were the first. Okie dokie. Who's coming upstairs? Up Who's coming upstairs for me? Upstairs. Upstairs. Up the stairs. Up here, guys. Come on. Now, you guys. Now, I need one of you here, one of you here, and one of you here. You just can't touch. Okay. Okay. Now, did you listen to my story where the lady had to put the feathers around the, the town? Well, we're going to do this story in a little bit of a different way. So we've got Carl, we've got Jerry, and we've got Kevin here. Colgate toothpaste. Some people here probably don't use toothpaste um, because they don't have much teeth. But <laughs> oh, so rude. <laughs> so we'll what we're going stretch. to do is this is a bit of a race. Do you guys like races? No. <laughs> well, we don't have to run. We don't Thanks. have to Give run. So this is going to be a bit of a race to see how we go. Now, when we say go, what you've got to do is you've got to squeeze all your toothpaste out onto the plate. All of it. All of it. All of it. <laughs> all of it. That's why I didn't get big tubes. Mm, I'm going to so stand over here. We're going to squeeze all of them out onto the plate. Here comes our cheer squad. <laughs> this is our support crew. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to squeeze it out when I say go. Then when you've got it all out, you've got to try and put it back in the tube. I wouldn't have told them and that And all yet. you can do is use the knife. You don't reckon you can do it? You don't think so? Let's see how... You reckon they can do it? Come on, give them a bit of encouragement. Yeah. All right. If anyone can do it, Mia can, because she's a girl. So let's... I always, got, I always got told this was a church of inclusivity. It is. Um, <laughs> but, okay, we ready? So you got to Okay, ready? 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 Set, Set go! go. Come, on. Come on, Mia, you can do it. Come on, Mia, do it for the girls. Squeeze it all out there. Oh, nice. No, look at it, it's so blue and pretty. Come on, Mia. That's the way. Come on, cheer them on. Cheer them on. Squeeze it from the end. That's the way you get more out. Okay, Let's now you've got to get it back into the tube once you've got it out. Okay. <laughs> um, What's it taste like? Are you all right? I have fresh, fresh mint bread. Some taste face tastes gross. Come on. <laughs> yes. Look at this, this is awesome. 
Oh, it's a tablet. Put it back in now. Just gotta crank it because it's a tablet. Keep it and. Better get some tissues or something. Eh? Dad, no more gets on. You just gotta put some in. Look at the different techniques. We've got this here. All hands in. Let's get into it. Over here, it's about gentleness, delicateness, like a butterfly, really. Then over here, we've got the technicians. How are we going, guys? I feel, I feel did you like get they all need in? more tools. There seems to be a lot still on your plate. What's going on? And what's, what's this? Seriously. Jace, who cleans your bathroom at home? <laughs> Joseph, who cleans your bathroom at home? Who cleans your bathroom? The bathroom fairy, so eh? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yeah. Is this what your bathroom looks like, Melissa? No. Well, to, after my nephew's been in there, it does. Who cleans your bathroom? The cleaner. Oh, Leanne. No. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Zero. How do we go, guys? How do we go? Pop it down. <laughs> I say that Mia has the cleanest hands. Mia would have. We've got a big mess here, haven't we? You've even got it on your face. <laughs> but we've got a big mess. It's a pretty big mess, isn't it? it it's a huge mess. And so, now I have to take them to kids' church like that. Thank you. Do you want to take them out with just the stuff on and get them to wash their hands out there? Yeah, it sounds good to me. Oh, thank you. But, but the thing is, we couldn't get it back in the tube, could we? It's too small. And that's a little bit like our mouths. Our mouths are pretty small, aren't they? And what happens is, <laughs> oh, well, compared to my tuba, they're pretty small. But lots of words come out of our mouth, and what we've got to do is we've got to be careful. Sometimes the words that come out of our mouth can hurt people, and sometimes they can build them up. They can be encouraging. And I want you to think, as you go out with Melissa, what would be the best words that come out of your mouth? The ones that hurt people, or the ones that give them happiness, gives them toothpaste on their hands? That gives them, you know, a smile on their face. So, because we can't always take back the words that we say, like the toothpaste. We can't get all the toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> Even if we got a, most of it in, there'd still be some left out. That's hey. right. Yeah. And see the big mess it leaves? That's like sometimes our words, it leaves a big mess. Thank you, guys. You can lick your hands and your fingers okay. if you really want to. No, no, no. Hands in the air and, and you're let's going give out them a that clap. Door. We're going out to kids' church. <laughs> Bill will fix that up. <laughs> John. John, would you like to come and bring us our next scripture reading, please? After looking at that, I don't know whether the kids will want to clean their teeth ever again. What's going on? You talk to me. Although they might squeeze the tube out all over the bathroom cabinet. Hi, Alicia. Oh, I forgot. Our reading this morning comes from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Not many of you should become teachers. My f Oh, I'll start again. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers. Because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, 
they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. May the Lord put his blessings upon that. Just before we share in singing, um, I was scrolling through the Salvos Connect or Link this week, I can't remember which one online, and came across um, the General's monthly devotional because I thought, oh, it might be good to put in the newsletter, but it was only as clip form. So we chose to share it with you this morning because um, there's some great words of wisdom there. I'm currently sitting in the chapel on the first floor of International Headquarters. I'm sitting right beside the mercy seat. It's a prayer bench that sits right in centre place at our chapel. It's a reminder to us of the presence, the provision, and the pardon of God. These mercy seats or prayer benches exist in Salvation Army halls all around the world. And week after week after week, many people make their way to these places of prayer and find that God is faithful and that in this place, they do in fact sense his presence, become aware of his provision and receive his pardon and grace in their lives. It's a beautiful place. I'm praying for you that in these days you might be aware of God's presence in your life, that you might be conscious of his provision for you and that you might know both his pardon, his forgiveness and his grace. May God bless you. Just as the singers get ready to come forward, the song that was played as our call to worship, Strength to Rise, we're going to have now as a congregational song. We introduced it to you before, and I believe you've had it before as well, but there's some great words in this song. But it's about us waiting upon the Lord. It's not about what we can do, it's about what he will do in and through us. So as the singers come and sing this beautiful song, let's share in singing with them this morning. It says, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. But then it says, our God... You reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. You do not faint. You won't grow weary. And so when Rhonda comes to share with us in prayer, let's think of those words. We often solemn our hearts in prayer, but this is, prayer should be exciting. Prayer should be alive. And so like this song, as you are comfortable to, let's sing it. Let's sing it with excitement, with worship, and with joy in our heart. Oh, baby. 
I spring it upon Tanya to join me. Um, as we have this time of prayer, for those who don't know, Tanya has been doing a fantastic job here and at Deception Bay in our Cell Connect. But she's been blessed by God to start her dream full-time role on Monday and will no longer be able to hang out on those couple of days with us. But we want to share a prayer this morning as Tanya's core family, just that God gives her the, the peace and a stillness. Because it doesn't matter if it's a job you love or a job you don't like or a job you know nothing about, going to a new job is daunting. Because you want to fit in, you want to do the best for those you're working with or for. And, um, you know, the enemy can use those times of self-doubt to try and get in. So this morning, let's share a prayer for Tanya. Father, this morning, we come before you to raise up our sister. As she starts this new job, Lord, take any trepidation away that's within her. Still her mind and her heart. And in those moments where, where tension might flare up within her, Lord, take it away and fill it with your word. Your words of encouragement, your words of, of confidence in her because you have gifted her greatly, Lord. She has the great ability to come alongside anyone, and I mean anyone, and be what they need in that moment, be it a listening ear, a sound voice, a shoulder to cry on, or someone to laugh with. You've given her wisdom and discernment, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that as she takes up her new role, that you use her as she avails herself to you. That in those moments, Lord, in those moments of quietness, that you fill her, not that she really needs it with a boldness, but that you give her a quiet boldness, Lord, to tackle anything that comes her way. We pray for Jimmy as he has to put up with her during this time of transition. Give him the patience that he may need as she adjusts to going back to full time and to, you know, maybe being tired on the feet at the end of the day. But Lord, we know in you all things are possible. We pray for this exciting new step, this new chapter for Tanya. And we pray, Lord, that just as she hands it to you, she knows your peace over her life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Always. <laughs> Before John Stewart brings our third scripture reading to us this morning, the um, musicians have um, prepared a musical item, and it's not just the band this morning, it's also the, the singers, the guitar, guitar, drum, yes, bass and drums. And I'll just bring it, I'll just bring it up because there's just, uh, I didn't print the words out, sorry. And it's the Millennium Prayer. Cliff Richard's song. And you can see the, the first part. It leads into, you know, the Lord's Prayer. But then it says, Let all the people sing Amen in every tribe and tongue. Let every heart's desire be joined to see the kingdom come. Let every hope and every dream be born in love again. Let all the world sing with one voice. Let the people say Amen. And you know, you know, Dean and I were blessed to be at Alice Springs and in our congregation we were across four or five main language groups of the Central Desert people. And we were blessed, well, listening to my singing they probably weren't blessed, but we were blessed on Sundays to be able to include, include songs in their languages. And what is great is when it's not just our voice in our language being heard, but many languages, many voices, sharing it from the heart with, you know, the confidence that one sings within their native tongue. And this song touches on that in that verse, that it's our whole world that Jesus came for, not just who we think it should be, and that we need to continue to reach out to those everywhere. So thank you for the musicians and for Ozzy this morning. And this is what, is this one that your daughter your daughter did so that everybody could take part in this way. Thank you. Thank her for us. What a blessing this morning. Thank you, Ozzy. Thank you. 
I've been blessed with the privilege of reading this week's Bible. It's from Mark, the Gospel of Mark, verses 8, 27 to 38. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea, Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get me be behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called a crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. God bless this reading from his words. Thank you. Well, as I said, there's not much hidden in what my message will be today. Some would say it's what makes the world go round, and it certainly sells newspapers and magazines and TikTok and Facebook and any other social media platform you can think of. And gossip is usually made up of rumours. Now, when we think about it, we don't like to be the victims of false rumours, do we? But often we can't help believing stories about other people, especially if they come from a close and reliable source. Now, Jesus' ministry attracted a great many rumours. And for a lot of this time, he was followed by large crowds and most had heard stories about him. And in those pre-mass multimedia days, every bit of news and non-news was by word of mouth. So what was the word on the street about Jesus? What were people saying about him? What were the rumours? What was the gossip? Well, in our Mark reading, that is what Jesus is asking. In the second part of verse 27, Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? Who do they say I am? What are the rumours? What's the gossip? What's the word on the street? Well, rumours spread like wildfire, so the disciples can give an immediate and a prompt answer. Some saying Jesus is John the Baptist. Others go further and say, no, he is Elijah. And still others are saying he is one of the prophets. All sorts of stories are going round the traps. And sharing this is good fun. But then Jesus, he gets there and he pulls them up sharply by asking, but who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? All these people are saying this, but who do you say I am? And silence rests upon them except the impetuous Peter. Because he's always got an answer. Having seen the wonderful things Jesus has been doing, he blurts out, and he's probably not even thinking about it. You are the Messiah. Or as the Greeks say, you are the Christ. And of course, Peter is right. 
almost. Jesus goes on to say, it is not as quite as simple as Peter thinks or says. For there's more to being the Christ and the Messiah than performing miracles and mighty works. Jesus knows. He knows that to be the true Messiah means suffering and even death. Well, this is too much for Peter. He gives Jesus a quiet rebuke on the side. For he's been influenced by what everyone expects the Messiah to be. But Jesus knows that for the Christ of the Messiah to complete the victory of God's goodness and love over all evil, that this will entail suffering in the conflict between goodness and evil. It will mean what we see on the cross at Calvary. This is no rumour or gossip. This is hard fact. This is the reality of the cross. To deny it is to be on the side of evil. It's going to be the way of rumour rather than reality. When it comes to rumour and gossip, we have to ask ourselves, is what we hear and say on the side of truth and goodness or on the side of evil? Today's readings, they have a quite a lot to say about speaking and talking and how we use our tongue. And from, from Isaiah, the prophet says, the Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens. Wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and, as I, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The prophet knows that he really is teaching what he's learned from God. Even though everyone around him disagrees, they despise him, they're probably telling him, be quiet, you don't know what you're talking about. Rumour and gossip can be a camouflage for the truth. And then in the letter of James... There's a solemn warning about the dangers of carelessness and unkind speech. There's a marvellous passage in the middle of the reading that says, The tongue is a small member, but it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue. A restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father. And with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. For with it we bless the Lord and the Father. And with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. We do both. Anyone who talks, whether to teach or to gossip will be held responsible for the outcomes of their words. The challenge, or even awkward verse in, Matthew, up in Mark 8, 35, says, for those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. This can be also applied to our speaking. 
Do I speak well? Do people see Jesus in me? Or when I'm out with my mates, am I speaking crudely? Am I speaking of inconsistent jokes? Am I speaking ill of people that I worship with? Or am I showing God's love in all I do, in all I say? We can play it safe and save face in our lives by going with the crowd and their popular opinion. Or we can take the risk of losing our life among those around us by standing up for what is true and just. Whether we do this will depend on how we answer the question Jesus posed. Who do you say I am? Have we decided who Jesus is in our lives? Friends, this will make all the difference of how we see the world. Lead our lives and relate to everyone around. Friends, how we speak, how we show love to others, speaks volumes of the kingdom. It's hard to be the odd man out at times, or odd woman, odd person. But Jesus died on the cross for us. He didn't get there and go, oh, not today, we'll do it tomorrow. He wasn't inconsistent. He got there and he spoke of who he was. His actions matched up with his words. And the kingdom of God was shown on earth as it is in heaven. This morning I say to you, we are all made in the image of God. Whether we sit in this room or there are people walking around who do not know Jesus Christ, everybody is made in the image of God. They are made for a purpose. They may not have found that purpose yet. They are not a mistake. They were made on purpose. I have two people in this room today that as a young teenager didn't give up on me. They loved me. They showed me who Jesus was. And they prayed for me because they saw me through the eyes of Jesus. And I love them for that. I want to challenge you this morning, friends. When we speak, are we sharing the love of Jesus? Are we telling people of their worth? Are we getting there and saying to them, Jesus died for you? Sometimes it's that direct. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's in other ways. Are we on our knees seeking, advocating for family that don't know Jesus yet? Are we seeking and advocating Jesus that they know but they, they choose not to talk to at the moment? Friends, we are a salvation army. We aren't, we aren't someone who sits in the background. We are to advance forward. We are to share the love of Jesus. We are to be Christ-centered people with the Holy Spirit revealed to us, seeking his hope. This morning, as we start our journey of Lent, what stuff do we have to leave at the mercy seat? Because... <laughs> When we moved here, dear, didn't we? We had lots of stuff. <laughs> and when you carry lots of stuff, you get tired. You get tired. What stuff do we have to leave? What stuff do we need to say, this is Jesus, this isn't? And it'll hurt. Who do I see that's struggling, that need I come alongside them and walk alongside and be 
from these readings, not the tongue that sets the fire of destruction, but sets the fire of the Holy Spirit. Friends, we have a choice. God made us to be people that we can choose to accept him or not. And so this morning we're going to have a song and it's by Darlene Check. And it says, where is it? Beautiful Lord, wonderful Saviour, I know for sure all of my days are held in your hands and crafted into your perfect plan. And you gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say, Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes. We need to be, we need the Holy Spirit to wet in us again. That's probably not even a word, but guess what it is now. To, to soak us again. To be malleable in his hands. If our hearts have gone hard, we need him to, to, to mould them again. We need to ask him, how do you want me to be used? For simply to put a uniform on or whatever, to ask Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, it comes with, now this is what you do. This is your part in the kingdom story. Friends, we're not using the microphones again, are we? We'll move the microphones. And if you want to come to the mercy seat this morning, And hand over something that's holding you back. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for repentance of words that you've said that you know are not of Jesus. Ask him to take your heart, take your life and mould it again into his, his image. To set you apart. To be brave, to be courageous. To be reminded that you are made in his image for a purpose, on purpose. And there's a will for your life. This place is here. It's not just a nice piece of furniture. It's a place for us to meet with God, like the general said. It's a place that we come to commune. It's a place of transformation. It's a place where we can leave it with God. And so as we play this song, I encourage you this morning you can come and stand, you can come and kneel, whatever you need to do. There'll be people that will pray with you if you want them to pray with you. But think, what are we using our tongues for? How are we sharing the love of Jesus? How are we showing that Jesus is real in our lives? What has to change in us? So let's listen to this song. Let's be active in what the Holy Spirit tells us this morning.
as we still have some in prayer, let me share a prayer. Father, this morning we come and what a great reminder of how our words can affect others this morning and that there's words from scripture that give instruction. Lord, I think each of us has been on the end of words that, we, that have cut, that have hurt, and maybe we too have said things, said things in the heat of the moment, said things that in any other circumstance would not depart our lips. So this morning, Lord, I, just, I pray for healing. I pray in each of our lives, Lord, where, where hurt words may have caused distance, where hurt words may have caused relationships just to, to fracture and break apart. This can happen so often in our families, Lord, and so often we don't even know what we've said. So my prayer for each of us, Lord, whether we're physically here in this room today or we'd be watching this afternoon or we haven't been able to come, Lord, is just that you continue to make us mindful of your word. You continue to make us mindful of how our words can hurt others. I've done it. I've done it plenty of times, Lord, and afterwards I know I've done it. So help me, Lord, to, to hold them in, to not even have those thoughts before before they form. Remove from me, Lord. Remove from each of us all that is not of you. Strengthen us. Fill our mouth with your words when our words will fail us. Help us to zip our mouth when all that's required is that listening ear. Help us, Lord, whether we're young, because I know for our young people in the playground at school, words from others hurt. And they can shape shape our lives from such a young age. So whether we're old, Lord, or whether we're younger, from our babies to our oldest, Lord, strengthen us. Help us to be the better person. Help us to, to show you every moment of every day. And I know that's hard, Lord, because I fail often. But, Lord, we just call upon you to fill us afresh this morning. And thank you. Thank you that you don't give up on us, even when we say harsh things to you, when we call out in pain to you and say things to try and push you away. You're the everlasting Father that's there every moment of every day for each of us. In your son's beautiful name we pray. Amen. just now will be waited upon for our free will gifts and offerings. And again, as, as there's still people in prayer, let's be respectful of that moment. This morning, the ladies are going to play for us. Oh, Jesus, I have promised. Thank you.
Gracious and holy God, accept what we offer today, our checks and cash, our faltering steps, our brokenness, our leftovers, our hope, our risking, our lives. Bless and tra transform all that we offer and all that we hold back, that new lives may be ours to celebrate and share in Jesus' name. Amen. going to sing this great song that was written by William Sherwin in our songbook. Soldiers of our God, arise, the day is drawing nearer. Shake the slumber from your eyes, the light is glowing clearer. Sit no longer idly by. Sit no longer idly by while the heedless millions die. Lift the blood-stained banner high. And what? Take the world for Jesus. Rouse and soul. No, I'm on the wrong song. Storm the swords of darkness, bring them down. I jumped across the page. Bring them down. Storm the swords of darkness, bring them down. Pull down the devil's kingdom, wherever he holds dominion. Storm the swords of darkness, bring them down. Wherever it is, let's go into that place. Let us be the light, that go, light of Jesus that goes into that place. And pull down, pull down those swords of darkness, whether it be to help people pull it down in their lives pull it down in our own lives or in a place. God has got the victory. God has the victory. So let's stand. We're going to sing these three verses straight through and then we're going to share in the benediction together. <laughs>
God's people said? Amen. Amen. We're going to share in the benediction. I'm going to um, say the first bit and then the response will come up on the next slide. We came to this sacred space to celebrate and affirm that the Lord is like a potter, making and reshaping us into God's image, to be and share the good news. Lord, send us out into your world as your change agents to help mould and remake the human condition. With your grace and your help, let it be so in this age and forevermore. Amen. Go with